There we go. Let's double check. You can all mm. see me before I start rambling. <laughs> hi. It's that time again. Is it me, Giles, or does this come around really quickly the closer to the end of the year you get? <laughs> Welcome to another Tuesday webinar from Duck Soup with me. I'm Jo Henderson. I work in our marketing team and I'm joined today with our Head of Professional Services, Giles Garnett. Today, we're going to be looking at how Duck Soup can help sales teams to level up their outreach and scale their activities across the team for a more cohesive approach to generating conversions. Before I hand over the microphone to Giles, let me remind you all that you are on mute. So make sure to add your questions in the question box on the GoTo Dash and those that I don't answer during the session, I'll put to Giles at the end. Any content we, we refer to or any link that we think might be useful will be shared with you in the chat function on the GoToWebinar dashboard. The video will also be sent to you all later today and will be uploaded to the website uh, later on this week at some point as well. As always, when we get started, I'll share a link to our free trial, which is for two weeks. It gives you access to the platform so you can see for yourself just how it works if you don't already use it. There's no commitment and we don't ask for any payment details either, so it's the perfect opportunity to give it a go. If you're an existing user, don't forget to leave us a review on G2 for the opportunity to get your mittens on one of our duck soup caps. I seem to have stopped wearing these of late, but we've got the blue, the yellow and the raspberry. Uh, and I'll be back at the end of the session to run through your questions with Giles and also to let you know all about the next webinar in two weeks time. But for now I'll hand over to Giles and we'll get working on the Teams. <laughs> awesome, thank you Joe. and uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon or indeed good evening to you wherever you may be in the world and thank you once again for joining us in the latest of our series of Duck Soup webinars. My name is Giles, I'm Head of Professional Services here at Duck Soup and you've just heard from Joe, who's one of our fabulous marketing team. So today we're going to be examining and exploring how we can harness the power of LinkedIn and Duck Soup, um, how we can combine those uh, within a team environment uh, to maximise your outreach. And while I'm talking, raise any questions, as uh, as Joe's mentioned there via the chat box, and any that are applicable, I'll try to answer at the end of the webinar. Um, webinar's being recorded. You've heard all that already, so I'm not going to go through all of that. Um, really important. I'm going to make sure there's plenty of time at the end for the question and answer because I think that. What we're going to go through here is mostly slideware. There'll be a couple of little bits and pieces where I'll dip into LinkedIn and, and, and DocSoup, but I suspect that a lot of the questions will relate to, uh, to how to do stuff. So um, if you're new to, to our, our webinars, I'm just going to go through the agenda very quickly. We're going to cover what DocSoup is. We're going to talk about DocSoup team accounts. We'll talk about sort of goals, aims, reporting, KPIs, that kind of thing. Approach and list building, um, really important when you're looking at uh, working as a team. Um, analysis, strategies and tactics, and then touching on multi-channel outreach. All of these different factors will help build up the, uh, the picture for you if you're looking to harness the power of duck soup in your team. Um, Okay, so on with the show. What is Duck Soup? So anybody who's new to the to, to, to the webinars or Duck Soup, what is Duck Soup? It is a Chrome extension. It's also compatible with some other Chrome-based browsers. We used to mimic human behavior on the LinkedIn platform, and that can be the free version, the sales navigator version, or indeed recruiter. Um, we can basically it works by mimicking human behavior on the platform, it gives you the possibility to harness the power of LinkedIn by automating actions such as visiting profiles automatically, sending connection requests, even sending in-mails or endorsing skills. Um, we've got three different paid versions of Duck Soup, um, and they are the pro version, the turbo version, the cloud version, and you can see all of the features, the pricing, the plan options in the link that's there at the bottom of the page there. So for today, we are going to be talking about the team collaboration features. Um, and if you're wanting to the, the, the possibility to harness the scalability of your team to increase your outreach. To make the best use of the team collaboration features, you'll need either DuckSoup Turbo or Cloud, especially if you're looking to use the campaign features. So be, be, be considerate of that when you're thinking about which plan, because if you're using Pro, you're going to be using that standalone, just a number of different key uh, licenses, uh, everyone working in isolation. And then it's up to you to manually organize things. If you're using Turbo or Cloud, there are team collaboration features in there which will help you along the way. So, DuckSoup team accounts. So with DuckSoup team accounts, um, you as the administrator or the manager retain complete control over who has access. 
when you purchase, you will basically allocate your license keys uh, or seats accordingly. Um, and you can set up other admins if you wish to delegate some of those activities. So if you've got a team, for example, of, I don't know, 10 people, and you want to give a couple of people the administra administrator access, you can do that so that they can then monitor reporting, for example, for monitor performance and that kind of stuff. With the team accounts, you can create team campaigns. Um, and we'll touch on that a bit, a bit later in a bit more detail. They become available to everybody. This can be really beneficial on, on, on all sorts of levels, and we will talk about that in more detail later. But basically, you can only see performance across your team for team-enabled campaigns. Basically, that makes it visible to everybody in your team and the reporting as well. doesn't matter whether you make use of the sharing of the campaigns for consistent outreach, but from reporting visibility, I would recommend making use of this. Um, and when we talk to, to, to people who are using this, then that makes everything a lot more straightforward from a reporting and monitoring point of view. When you sign up for a team account, quite simply decide how many users you have, and then you distribute your license keys accordingly. And then quite simply uh, create your campaigns, get your targets enrolled, and you're up and running. And that's, no, it's not the end of the webinar yet. No. There is a lot more to take into consideration. So yeah. This is just kind of a high sum, high level summary of the team accounts and what you can do very quickly to get things up and running. So let's start with some of those, those considerations. Um, you should consider your team structure. Um, how many users or profiles are you going to use? And what roles within the lead gen process are each of those users going to have? Um, uh, our, our expectations that reporting be centralized with one person collect, collecting all of that information. Um, they will be need to set, be set up as an admin on your account uh, in order to have that visibility. Having users in different roles can help. So when you're thinking about your team, your team makeup, and everyone thinks, okay, I've got a bunch of SDRs or whatever it may be, actually having different profiles with different, 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 um, uh, yeah, different profiles yeah, with, with, with different focuses will achieve different levels of success depending on your target audience. And of course, we consistently see that people in more senior roles or with, with, with titles that look more senior get a better response rate. Now, each individual is presented on LinkedIn is also really, really important. Have clear guidelines. Um, uh, sorry, yeah, have, have clear guidelines and well-managed expectations uh, so that users know how to present themselves on LinkedIn. If you're in an SDR role these days, it's pretty normal to be expected to, to, to have company branding on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, it's an essential tool in the lead gen space. So once you've done that, then have clear and measurable realistic targets. Uh, these, of course, will evolve and change, change over time, but do not run before you can walk. Think about building things up gradually over time. It's with all of these things, it's like warming up an email account. Um, and we're going to be doing a webinar on this next week as well, actually, um, how, we, how you can warm up, up an account over time. But make sure that you are being realistic with your, with your goals and uh, make sure that those are manageable. Because if, if you make unrealistic targets, then actually the, you, you're just setting yourself up to fail. So that's some goals and some aims. And now when it comes to sort of um, KPIs and reporting, and you know the, these these numbers here are purely indicative. These are not absolutely gospel. You shouldn't just take these and, and copy paste. When you're running a single account and starting slowly, you could be looking at around when you start out 100 invites per week, looking to grow your network. Now, of course, with more accounts, you can then multiply this accordingly. Um, one really important note on this, and I can't re-emphasize this enough: do use genuine accounts. Um, we see it all the time. LinkedIn is actually riddled with fake accounts and you can usually spot them a mile off. So I would recommend wherever possible, use real accounts, use real people. LinkedIn's designed to be a social media platform um, and you'll have greater levels of success if you use it as it was designed to be used and don't abuse it. But harness the power of the automation tools like DuckSoup um, in order to make sure that you're getting the most out of it. Um, this example here, yeah, we're looking at a, a, a realistic expectation of, you know, acceptance rate around 20%. That is a very achievable level of acceptance, uh, of connection acceptance rates. It's not, it's not completely blowing things out of the water. If you're not performing at 20%, then I would usually consider that you need to review your approach. Either that's with your messaging 
or with the target audience that you're approaching. But of course, every industry sector, geographical location uh, could be different and take that into consideration. You should be more familiar with what a normal rate should be within your industry. Now, there are certain industries I've spoken to where it's a very small population um, and you know, getting anything over like a 10% is really good. Where there are other, some other areas whereby if you, uh, if you even visit profiles, you get responses any, anyway. So you can you know, um, ch change your goals according to your target audience. When we're talking about a 20% acceptance rate then, and then we're talking about a 30% response rate. So that's 30% of the 20% that have accepted. So if you're getting, getting a response rate of 30% out of that 20, that's great because then depending on what your what your approach is, then you can have your conversation and pivot accordingly and push those and steer those those um, those targets towards your call to action, whatever that may be. In this case, it could be a, a, a meeting, whatever it may be. So that's how we can think about our team reporting and the KPIs, and we can measure all of this through uh, through the funnel flow in DuckSoup. We'll, we'll be looking at DuckSoup and, and some of those screenshots and, and, and how we can do that a little bit later. So that's team reporting, thinking about those numbers, achievable targets, and being realistic. Um, coordinating. Now, this is really important because if you're working in a team, you do not want to duplicate activities and look looked a bit daft to be honest if you're uh, you know if multiple peach people are reaching out to the same people believe you me i have seen this repeatedly um where i get an invite from somebody that with a with, with a with a message that's worded in a certain way and then within two hours i get an invite from someone else who works in the same organization with almost exactly the same and then later on a third one you see it you do see it if people haven't got a really good well thought out process. Now, DuckSoup team campaigns do allow consistency and they prevent duplication. So once somebody is in a campaign, then no one else can put them into that team campaign. But you also need to consider, you know, depending on the maturity of your, of your, your organization, your process and everything, how are you gonna segment your targets? Are you gonna segment by location or maybe job title or seniority? Maybe you're maybe you cross industries, maybe you're approaching lots of different industries. Maybe you've got um, a sales navigator advanced account and you can filter by accounts, or maybe you're even using custom lists. Remember with DuckSoup, we can create CSV files with LinkedIn URLs very, very quickly. And then you can just allocate those lists out to people depending on, uh, of course, other factors as well. Remember they need to, they need to have a, a a degree, uh, you know, some some connections in their network in order to be able to connect with people. So do consider that as well. Um, make sure you're also using all of those search criteria in LinkedIn. Um, I can't reiterate this enough. You know, the, whether you're using regular LinkedIn, you've got a reasonable number of filters. If you've got Sales Navigator, you have even more. And if you've got Sales Navigator Advanced, which is another, another level of subscription, of course. It allows team collaboration, and you can then make a, uh, make use of those account filters across your team. One thing that should also mention here, and a lot of it's amazing the number of people who I speak to who don't aren't even aware of this. Make use of Boolean search terms. Um, well, now I think on the next slide, touch on that. So here, for example, so got free or or, reg, or premium LinkedIn, the, basically the free platform, separated by territories or accounts, job titles maybe. If you've got Sales Navigator, you can accounts and lists. And Sales Navigator Advanced, you've got the, the, the possibility to include, exclude um, uh, accounts, lead searches, et cetera, et cetera. When you're filtering by location and you've got the chance to in Sales Navigator, use the company headquarters location. Remember, a lot of people work remotely these days, and you want to make sure that you are being consistent in that approach. Something I was talking to uh, to my colleague Scott about uh, last week, and you know, you, you know, because people work remotely all the time, be consistent in that approach. Don't just look at someone's geographical location where they work. Look at the company headquarters location, and do make sure that you uh, pay attention to that because that is really, really important. So we've built our list. We've got our, you know, we've, we've defined our. our um, our approach, et cetera, et cetera. And we've now got our campaign up and running maybe. So we will, when I do do some demo a little bit later, we will look at the campaigns in case anybody here is new to Duck Soup and you've maybe not seen these webinars before. So once you've got your campaigns up and running, use your funnel to monitor the performance of each of the, your, your end users and your campaigns. Um, have 
targets, thresholds, goals, etc., which will trigger or have certain levels to trigger reviews, and do use different um, different approaches with different profiles. Don't be scared to you know A B test and adapt and change, but give your campaigns time to perform. Um, we of course have the auto withdrawal of invites functionality. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? Um, we have the ability to auto withdraw invites after a certain amount of time. But remember, a lot of our targets they're not on LinkedIn every day. You know, a lot of us are working on LinkedIn every day. But you know, remember, some people are just checking into LinkedIn maybe once or twice a week, maybe once or twice a month. Now, personally, I always give people a, a month to respond to my invites. It's just my 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 process that I follow. You know, I, there are some people I speak to, they think, you know, two or three weeks is enough. I tend to give, yeah, four weeks, around a month is, is what, what I aim to do. So you need to give your campaigns time to perform. Um, make sure that people have t a chance to, to respond and react to your invites, or your interactions, whatever your chosen um, approach may be. And then you want to make sure that your automation robot, in this case, Duck Soup, is busy. You don't want to leave it there snoozing or, or you know, just twiddling its thumbs. You, you know, you're, you're, you're paying for a, for a service whereby, you know, you have this functionality that's available. And of course, within the boundaries of keeping your account safe and, and staying under those LinkedIn limits. Plan. Make sure you are enrolling people into your campaign so there's always something there for DuckSoup to process. So if we're, if we're working at the 100 uh, invites a week, that's 20 a day. Great. We want to make sure there's always something in there. Tend to work in, I tend to work in one or two week um, lead times or batches, shall we say. So we've always got maybe at least a week's worth of activities in the bank there ready to go. It's like um, yeah, making sure that you're filling the hopper uh, to keep that, that, that machinery busy. It's really important. You don't want it to be sitting there dormant. And of course, remember, if you've got a team, you need to make sure that everyone's got all of their, uh, their, uh, their queued activity filled up to make sure that the, the robot is busy on their behalf. Then when it comes to strategies, so our outreach strategies, um, we've talked about already, we've mentioned already the team campaigns. It ensures visibility. Um, it's really important that, you know, if you're working as part of a team and whether that's a small team of two or three people or it's a bigger team, 10, 15, 20, whatever it may be, you enable those team campaign functionalities and then you can then monitor from a, an overall perspective. Then you want to decide whether you're using standard messaging, standard approach across your team, which you know is, which is, um, uh, you know, you have a standard approach, maybe certain uh, terminology that's used in your messaging and your outreach, or do you give people the flexibility to make it unique per user? Um, I've seen both approaches, and both approaches work. Um, I personally like the fact that people put their own, their own. Uh, individual identity into their messages we all have our own ways of communicating um, and it's very obvious to see if someone's written you know just use an AI tool uh, to, to, to construct their messaging um, everyone has their own idiosyncrasies when they come to writing messages so I think having that that personal flavor to your outreach is, is really useful um, that said there is always a place for standard messaging uh, depending upon your target audience depending upon your industry etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, with Duck Soup, you have got, of course, those those um, uh, markers that you can use in your messaging to to have your fields populated. So underscore FN underscore for first name. When you've got a team account, you've also got a signature, which is that one, the underscore SIG underscore. I'll show you that again in a second when we come to uh, uh, to reviewing uh, how this looks in real life. So that's our outreach strategies. Think about, you know, we are using team campaigns. Maybe it's standard messaging, maybe it's personalized signature, and, and, and think of that from there on. And then your tactics. Now, clear approach to each of your target groups. And some, some ideas include here. Now, now, I'm gonna add a couple as well as I talk here because there are some others which I've not touched upon here. So think about attendee lists of webinars or events. If you can get that list of data out of LinkedIn or from other sources and you've got the LinkedIn URLs, have an approach to those people. Maybe you've got people who've clicked or opened or downloaded assets. You know, you've got the, the information around those people. Maybe you've got details about people who've interacted with certain content or LinkedIn. Or maybe they're a member of a certain discussion group or they've, you know, engaged with certain posts and that kind of stuff. 
but maybe you're just using you know cold cold deals maybe you're, you're just looking for, for, for cold leads uh, you're, you've got some information you've got you know a couple of tidbits you're using keyword searches whatever it may be you'll probably have a different approach to each of these groups of people it could also be that you're just nurturing your existing network. This isn't on the slide, but you could be that it could be, you know, you've got somebody in your team who's got a massive network. You want them to harness the power of that network and inform them what you're doing. That's where you can use a nurture campaign to reach out to your, or to their first, first degree, existing first degree uh, connections. And DuckSoup is great for that because that's something you really can do at scale. Instead of being limited to maybe 20 or 25 invites a day, you could be direct messaging 100, maybe 200 people a day if they're already in your network and you're wanting to make sure that you're getting some, you know, harnessing the power of that network and reminding people what you do. Remember, you can create as many different duck soup campaigns as you like. Of course, the more you have, the more you have to manage, the more complex it becomes, but you've got all of these different outreach strategies which are possible and available to you uh, to help you maximize the use of you know, the, this LinkedIn um, environment, the, net, the LinkedIn database is a phenomenal, it's a gold mine of information. So you should be able to make use of it. And by having multiple users doing these things in, in parallel, if it's well coordinated, it can be incredibly powerful. As well as LinkedIn, of course, there are other, other opportunities for lead generation, of course. You could be using cold calling, you could be messaging, you could be emailing, whatever it may be. Um, is maybe ducks maybe linkedin is just a you know one part of your of your your lead gen approach this is where you really also need to put some time and effort in to make sure that you're handling responses in the correct way um whether people respond to a, maybe an email outreach you don't don't want to accidentally reach out to them on linkedin or another platform and vice versa if you're reaching out on linkedin and people respond you want to make sure that you know your maybe your e your email campaign then comes to uh, an appropriate end um this is where you need to be very clear on your process and and maybe link to other platforms um you know we've got some direct integrations with with some crms already so if you're hubspot pipe drive sharp spring fresh sales and soon to, to soon to be adding salesforce to that uh, portfolio we've got all of those direct integrations that you could make use of so if you've got an email campaign running response comes in it appears in your crm then that triggers maybe uh the blacklisting of a, of a, of a profile against a campaign so that you don't accidentally tread on people's toes repeatedly now this is where you know you want to make sure that you're, you're whilst you're harnessing the power of these automation tools that you're also making sure that you're managing things in the correct way so you don't look um maybe you know uh, maybe unprofessional in in not having a coordinated approach we've got all of those existing integrations but we also have the open api with both turbo and cloud so there are lots and lots of possibilities so for example I'm aware of a number of users who now use for example um an integration uh with slack uh, so when somebody responds in via email or maybe via LinkedIn, that is visible in a Slack channel so that anybody in the team can pick that up and change the status within the CRM or whatever platform they're using to make sure that no further outreach happens and says, yep, yeah, put a stop to all automation because we're now in a direct conversation with these people. This all, Getting all of this stuff right really adds to the professionalism of your setup and it's really, really important. So I can't reiterate this enough. Be very aware if you are going down the route of using multi-channel outreach, you have to take all of these factors into consideration. <clears throat> okay, so you'll be delighted to know that's pretty much the end of all the slides. So now I'm just gonna just touch on a few things in LinkedIn, hopefully. So uh, just to uh, just to show, make sure that everybody's aware of everything. So if you're using regular LinkedIn, of course, when we carry out some sort of a search, of course, make sure you're using the and or and not um, parameters to make sure we're looking at, you know, specific people in LinkedIn. So here, for example, I'm using procurement and manager. I could say here, um, uh, not, for example, uh, director. Perhaps I'd like to narrow, now, narrow down my search a little bit that way. So whenever we're building a search result, make sure using and or not, make sure you're um, filtering by location. If you're in regular LinkedIn, of course, we've got that that possibility there. We'll look at Sales Navigator in a second. But always 
make use of all these 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 filters because you can then make sure that you're looking at the correct industries the correct maybe profile language whatever it may be service categories etc cetera, etc cetera. all of these things are really really useful if we're using sales navigator of course and we'll just wait for this to load always takes a little bit longer when you're live demoing of course um so again here we could um we could be looking here for example um Remember this well, yeah. So I've got procurement and director here. Oh, I've got pluses in there, but there we go. That's obviously LinkedIn putting those in there. Um, so if I if I was to do this, for example, and I was looking for procurement procurement directors, that's quite a mouthful. Um, this is where I would then use company headquarters location. I would not you be using, for example, the personal geography here. I would be focusing here very much on company headquarters location here in order to make sure that I was. You know, if I was working within a team and people were working within certain territories, for example, then you would say in here, okay, well, maybe I now only want to look, you know, maybe, maybe it's in um, in Texas, for example, whatever it may be. And also remember, with many of the filters, especially in Sales Navigator, you can specifically exclude. So that can help you in making sure that you're not treading on your colleagues' toes as well. So do make sure you're using those filters there. Now, similarly, if we've set up accounts within LinkedIn. Of course, you can do that personally, but if you're using accounts within um, a Sales Navigator advanced um, uh, subscription, then you can share those account lists across your team and you can include and exclude certain accounts. So that really can help you narrow down and make sure that you're targeting the right people. As I say, always make use of as many of these filters as possible if you're really wanting to target people um, very, very specific. Now, anybody who's new to DuckSoup, anybody who's not seen these demos before, remember whenever you're on a search page or if you've built a list that you want DuckSoup to run up against, you have to wait for the DuckSoup icon to turn green and say at your service. Once it's turned green and said at your service, that's when you can then, if you're using Turbo or Cloud, that's when you can then enroll your profiles into whichever one of your campaigns you so desire and, and, and select the number you want to put in there. Remember, you can't enroll somebody into the same campaign twice. So do remember that that's a that's a that's a global setting. You can't put somebody into the same same campaign twice, and that goes for team campaigns as well if they're shared across your team. Just while we're in LinkedIn as well, let's just touch on a couple of other lists that you can use DuckSoup against. So if, for example, you have got um, content that people are interacting with. You can run Duck Soup against, for example, a list of people who've reacted to a post. Um, in a moment, the Duck Soup icon will turn green, and we can then run Duck Soup against that that list. Um, it will turn green in a second, and as I said just now, when you're doing a live demo, it always takes that little bit longer. Um, so we could be running Duck Soup against this. There we go. It's turned green now. Now, one thing, especially if you're using a team approach you may want to create a custom list. Um, and if you're looking at building custom lists, the easiest way to do that is to find a list, scan the list and gather those LinkedIn URLs from that list. Um, you can look up scanning on our, on our support pages as to what that does. It basically skims off the, the, um, the URLs of the, the, the people who are on that list there. You can download that CSV file and then you can create your own CSV file and reach out to those people. We'll show you that in a second as well. Um, other lists you can run DuckSoup against, so there's alumni lists, um, employee lists, those sorts of things. If you've got page, if you're if you're an admin for a company page and you've got page followers or, or even newsletter subscribers, we covered that in a, in, a, in a webinar a couple of weeks back. So you can also use those lists as well to reach out to people. Similarly, if you've got LinkedIn recruiter, you can use the, um, the search result or indeed the, the project lists and those sorts of things as well. Another one as well, Sales Navigator, lead lists, all of those sorts of different places that you can run Duck Soup from. If you're using um, custom lists and you've got CSV files and you're maybe maybe you've created a list of I don't know 5,000 people and you're going to break that up into chunks of a thousand each for your for your team members, then you would of course be uploading those those lists into your into your campaigns. So what we'll do then we'll go into the Ducks Dash here and we'll. First thing we'll show you is how we can upload a CSV file. So here in the Ducks Dash, um, if we go over to the left-hand side and we look here at the, the funnel flow, um, this is 
your personal funnel flow. The multi-funnel is where you'd see all your team uh, results here. But if I have, for example, a list of URLs uh, in a file, I can enroll from file here, or indeed I can enroll from a clipboard. So if I go enroll from file here, there we go, and I've got maybe I've got a, a list of CS, uh, a CSV list here with some LinkedIn URLs in there. Now I've got nearly 500 in that particular file. Again, I can just select whichever campaign I would so desire and enroll people straight into that campaign. Now, if I was running at 20 invites a day, so 100 a week, I could basically be be loading up you know, five five weeks worth of outreach in, in in a matter of minutes here, very very quickly. Get duck suit, get on with stuff. So I can then just do more productive things with my time rather than copying and pasting messages on LinkedIn. Um, so that's that. That's how we can upload from a file, or indeed we can cop we, we can paste out of our, our clipboard if we've copied some LinkedIn URLs. We can just paste them in here and do exactly the same there. So anybody who's new to DuckSoup, let's just have a very quick look at campaign structures. I'm not going to talk about messaging strategies here we've covered that in a lot of our previous webinars and we've got loads of supporting material on our website um, but if we just go to our drip campaigns here let's just have a very quick look um, at some example campaigns here now as i said earlier you can build as many different campaigns as you like I've got a whole list of different ones here for different purposes and i suspect if you've seen my webinars before you've i've, I've used this one a number of times uh, in the past growth hacking english here this is just an example of uh, an outreach campaign to engage with people who are members of a of a, of a certain discussion group campaigns. Um, everyone hopefully can see me and hear me okay, um, and apologies for the technological interference there. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got our, yeah, we've got here our, our, our campaign here, growth hacking, in this case, English sales navigator want people to be able to see that I've visited them. So I've got my notifications on, I've got my visibility settings set correctly. If I enroll someone in this campaign, they get a visit, connection request, then DuckSuit monitors for when someone accepts and then queues up the appropriate follow-up actions. If someone responds mid-campaign for that individual, the campaign pauses um, and you can check all of that and monitor all, all of that here through your own personal funnel flow. This will show you when people have uh, been invited, when they've accepted and when they've responded. So it's up to you as an individual to monitor those response or you have a process built to man manage that accordingly. If you've got a team um, account in the multi-funnel here, now I don't have a team account, You, whoever the administrator or the administrators are for your account would then see the statistics from a high level perspective they would not see the message exchanges, but they would see the statistics from a high level perspective in order to be able to monitor the success of each and every single campaign per individual that's in that team. Um, so there's all sorts of reporting possibilities here through the multi-funnel. Um, actually, that was most of what I was gonna say, so we're getting towards the end of it anyway. Um, hopefully, while I've been chatting, there have been some questions, or while I've been while I've been away having a coffee break, which of course is what I did. Um, <laughs> Um, there have been some questions coming in, Joe. Um, so, yeah, uh, do you want to do you want to fire away with questions, and we can uh, hopefully get some interactions from people. And uh, yeah, take it from there. Let me find them. Right. Um, thank you for everybody who uh, held on and listened to my ramblings. Um, let's have a look. Um, so, apologies. For this, if I say it wrong, Faku or Fasu asks, does DuckSuit require that Chrome or the LinkedIn tab is open in order for the campaigns to run effectively? Or can you launch campaigns and forget about it? So this depends upon which version of DuckSoup, you have to be absolutely honest. Um, if you're running DuckSoup Turbo, then yes, your computer needs to be on and Chrome has to be open on your on your on your um, desktop somewhere. Um, if you minimize it to the bottom of the page, then DuckSoup snoozes because of the way that Chrome is built. Um, if, however, if, however, you have a DuckSoup Cloud Edition, then you do a one-time sync with your with your LinkedIn account, um, and then effectively LinkedIn is available 24/7 to be able to um, operate or execute your your chosen DuckSoup campaign activities. Um, you can, of course, not run it 24/7. You can use the planner to determine which hours it, hours it's running, so you're not sending out messages maybe at three o'clock in the morning. Um, and some people work those hours, but not everybody. Um, but uh, yeah, essentially, it depends on which version you have. So yeah, Turbo, your computer has to be on. With cloud, everything everything is executed remotely um, and can be available 24/7 
if you want it to be, even when your own local computer is off. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for Roger. I can only hear the girl. The girl is called Jo, by the way, Roger. <laughs> um, Eve asked, how did you get the reactions window? And if I'm honest, I can't remember when that request came in. So Okay, so um, yeah, basically we, we just go to um, just go to a, a LinkedIn homepage, go and find an article. Let's see if there's a new one pop, popped up at the top of my, my news feed. Yeah, there we go. So there's one there. 17 people have reacted to this post. If I click on that 17 there, I can then see all the people who've reacted to it. Now, I can run it by duck soup against all 17, or I could choose the thumbs up or the applause, whatever it may be. But again, here, I've got my list here that I can run, run duck soup against um, if I so desire. Really, really powerful. If people are engaging with certain posts, then then you know that they have certain interests or you know a level of uh, um, buy-in to whatever's being posted there. So it can be a really, really handy way of uh, um, reaching out to people. Um, we have a question. I'm just finding the. Um, so I've almost started singing. <laughs> oh, you got to that stage. <laughs> we nearly did get to desperation phase. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of questions about um, where was the integration Jars was talking about with the messages routing to Slack? Could you explain more? That was from Eva. And Aaron also asked, where can I find more about the Slack integrations? So I'm just going to add into the chat the link to the case study that we have, um, which talks about the tech stack that was used by AMT or developed by AMT, which includes Slack. Yeah. Um, do you want to add any more information? No, because um, actually, funny enough, I was talking to somebody, somebody else this week uh, based in the UK who were looking at building their own Slack integration through, through the API. And actually, they've decided, I think, to use that same uh, integration that's uh, outlined in that um, in that particular uh, case study um, that you're referring to there, Joe. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a you know a great way of working because I mean, so many people are using Slack as their way of communicating and monitoring, and and, and everyone having the same access to that sort of uh, almost bulletin board type of information is really really handy. So yeah, have a look at that uh, that information there that Joe's sharing there into the. Uh, into the chat box and uh yeah that will hopefully enlighten you that's that's the way i would go um, at the moment with that thank you um eve just to follow on from that reactions window um she's also said so once they're in the reaction window how do you get them into a selection to whom you will send personal messages well it's up to you it depends on what you want to do so i mean here for example i've got a list of people here who are they're all second and third degree connections um so, you know, for example here, um, I would possibly then, if I was using Duck Soup Turbo, depending on what I wanted to do, I could scan the list. Scanning would create me a, a, a CSV file of 17 people, and then I could upload that list if I wanted to. Or if I've already prepared a campaign which says, hey, you liked that such and such and such a post, hey, wasn't it a great, great blah, 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 whatever you wanted to say, you could create a campaign around that hit enroll profiles, select that particular campaign from your list. Let's put them into that one. And then you could select however many you want to put in there. In this case, I'm going to put 17 in there. There we go. I'm going to put 17 people there into a, in this case, a visit only campaign just for demonstration purposes. Um, so all of these people are now going to get an auto visit from me based upon that campaign. But if I camp, if I divide, design, designed a campaign around that article, then maybe um, I would then be putting them into that that campaign in that way there um, so that that's uh, that's one very very quick way of being able to do that okay thank you Kessie has asked I'm keen to understand the best way to remove connections and how to alternate this <laughs> removing connections from LinkedIn that's that's a that's one we don't get asked very often so there are there are some people um, who like to purge their connections on LinkedIn. Um, and remember, of course, there is a limit, an upper limit is how many first degree connections you can have on LinkedIn, and that is 30,000. So I've been talking to a couple of people, and I know some people have approached this in different ways. Um, so we've spoken to some people who were 25, 26, even more thousands of, of, of invite, of, of, of connections. And what they worked out is there's actually many of those people are effectively dormant or maybe they've retired or something like that and they're not active on LinkedIn and they're maybe no longer suitable maybe they've changed industries maybe they've changed jobs maybe all sorts of things 
what you can do with them with duck soup is you can actually get duck soup to automatically withdraw them, uh, remove them from your network but you can only do this in regular linkedin by auto visiting them so for example if i wanted to for example uh, let's um, ceo i'm going to look here now i'm going to do a quick search for ceos in my first degree network so there i've got ceo and i'm going to go first degree so here we go so there we are. i've got 816 ceos in my in my network maybe i want to disconnect from everybody who's a ceo in my network based in the uk there we are so i've got here a list of i don't know how many i've got here 130 something like that people here that i maybe want to disconnect from i need to stop the robot from running the other action that's what it was a problem there um so here we go i've got my I'll tell you what i'm going to do because it was scrolling through to try and still sort of still enroll people into my campaign let's just open it in a new tab that's going to be easier there we go there are 125 people here now of course you would put your own filters in here and you would say okay well these are the people i want to disconnect from maybe you put a keyword in there retired i don't know or maybe you put certain industries or something in there what we can do then with duck soup is when the icon turns green in a second and again live demo it's going to take longer um there we go um what we can do now is um, in our duck soup options and you need your expert um, options enabled in order to be able to do this click on your duck soup options and we go down here and we can see here we've got to disconnect a profile from your network using standard linkedin we can only do it in regular linkedin we can't do it in sales navigator so we are a disconnect there if i now go back to here and i say to this list here now just go and visit these profiles duck soup will visit each profile in turn and disconnect me from those individuals so that way i could purge my connections in linkedin people don't get notified when you when you remove them so remember that you're not going to be offending anybody um but yeah that's the quickest way to do it but you do need to be careful in how you compile your list i mean maybe one, one thing you might want to do is for example um if you go into um into your uh, into your, your your linkedin settings here um and you download your data for example you go into your, your settings here and you go and um uh, download your data from the data privacy here you can get a list of all of the people you're connected to including their linkedin urls you could then create a csv file of the people you don't want to be connected to anymore and then go and upload that file into duck soup here so we can use the revisit tool here to then go and find those people so say this is my my csv file here there we go there's my csv file that's not a good example because it's not working it will do in a second once i've got my csv file here again i can then run duck soup from here and say right disconnect from these people by visiting those people um, and we could do that that way as well but you do need to make sure you've enabled this option here and you just need to auto visit those people if for some reason you're seeing a smaller um a smaller menu uh, there then you are probably seeing this option you have the basic menu to enable the advanced menu just go to your user tab press the expert options and then that opens up these options for you to enable you to do that okay yeah. um also um how can you get rid of connections who are just sat there <laughs> so i guess people who are pending and it's not moving oh so so um um uh, invites that haven't been responded to yeah cool yeah that's that's very 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 straightforward if again we go to our duck soup option so we click on our duck soup icon go to our options button here under again under our actions tab here and we need the expert um options enabled down here we can see here cancel invites we can get duck soup to automatically cancel connect there are pending connections requests after yeah maybe it's four weeks whatever you want if i was to press this button now it would do it automatically if i turn this one on it will do it regularly so it will keep on top of it automatically and that's a, that feature is available those last two features I've, I've talked about there they're available with pro turbo and cloud so um, yeah all of those options should be possible thank you jennifer has asked do you know if there are any demos for showing how to connect our lists from duck soup with our crm platforms such as hubspot can you repeat that one again please joe sorry do you know if there are any demos to show how to connect lists from duck soup 
with CRM platforms and HubSpot's been mentioned as an example. Okay, I mean we've got we've got lots of um, webinars, previous webinars and bits and pieces as to how we can set that up. So if you've got your list here in DuckSoup, so maybe you found a list of people, you've enrolled them into a campaign, for example, and you want them now to appear in your HubSpot environment, you would go to your list available with Turbo and Cloud, you would go to your Ducks Dash. Um, here in your Ducks Dash, this is where you can then define uh, the configuration of your CRM connection. So this is where you can then add your HubSpot account, for example, or your pipe drive, whatever it may be. And in this case here, you know, I've got I've set this one up. Uh, this was for a, for a demo recently. Um, you can see here that I've actually set this up to create and update contacts from tagged profiles. And what I'm doing there is I'm using a duck soup tag to make sure that if they go into a certain campaign, they will appear in my um, in my CRM. Now it could be a case that you say, well, I'm only interested in people who've connected with me, and that's usually how we see people doing this. Have it set up so it's only going to bring across across people who have. Uh, who've accepted my connection request or who are already first degree connections. This is also configured in such a way that if somebody accepts my connection request, they will automatically be added to my CRM. Um, and we can do this with, um, let's say, Pipedrive, HubSpot, Sharpspring, and Fresh Sales, um, soon to add to that portfolio Salesforce. Um, they're all very similar, the integrations with, with all of those platforms. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, keep your eye out for when uh, Salesforce is available yeah watch this space so if you go into was it jennifer yeah jennifer if you go into the webinars page on our website and you type in type into the search function hubspot um then it will bring up two previous webinars um i'll just check the blogs as well because i imagine we've got some hubspot focused content in there um yeah there are two one which is particular hubspot focus in the um in the blogs i will just ping you that blog now as well um there we go that's for jennifer um tony asked if you put the list of messages is there a chance to stop the automatic first message after the connection if we got an answer from a lead our auto message could not be related to the received answer hang on okay. i'm trying to yeah you got it <laughs> So, so, so I think what he's saying there is if, for example, um, in your campaigns, you know, if, if, if someone's responded very quickly and you don't want them to get that first message, um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can through the funnel here, you can uh, remove people from your campaign. Um, so you can see here there's an unenroll button here. So you can take people out of your campaign very, very quickly. Um, you could switch them to uh, another campaign if you so wanted to. Um, so there are all sorts of different possibilities uh, regarding that. But uh, yeah, uh, primarily through the funnel flow here, I would use the unenroll button here uh, in order to do that. Um, so yeah, that's how I would approach that. Cool, thank you very much. Aaron has asked, can you target followers of a company page and then enroll them for a drip campaign? And if you can, how? Yes, as long as you're the admin for a company page. If you're not the admin for the company page, then you can't do it. I don't, I'm not an admin for a company page, so I can't show you. So, but if you watch the webinar from through a few weeks ago that I did with uh, with with Beth, I think it was a month ago now, um, then you'll be able to see that in action. I don't know if you can dig out that that link to that one for us, Joe. Um, yeah. But basically, you know, you need to go into into LinkedIn. You go into your 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 um, uh, your company page admin settings, and then you look at the page followers from there. And then, yeah, once you've got that list on the page, then you can just enroll people into that uh, into that environment from there. So I, I don't have admin rights for, for any company pages, so I can't show you straight away here, but it was um, covered in that previous webinar. Similar with uh, newsletter subscribers. So if, yeah. you're, if you have your own newsletter, then you can also do that there. So if you go into the webinars, I'm not sending the link, because if I click on it to go to it, it will start playing. Um, which means then you won't hear my beautiful voice. But if you um, go into the webinars page and type in newsletter, it's the only one that comes up. And that was recorded last time on the 17th, 17th of September. So if you type in company followers or newsletters, then that's the one that comes up there. Um, let's see, we have some more. I've lost my questions box. Where's it gone? There it is, I found it. <laughs> um, Sam has asked, how can I start with an email list as an input to a campaign? 
How can you start with an email? This is an input to a campaign. Um, yeah, it depends uh, on, on all sorts of factors because ultimately for Duck to run, you need the LinkedIn URLs. Um, there are options to be able to do lookups against email lists, um, and you could also use perhaps our integration with Woodpecker to help you with that. Um, so Woodpecker is a way to be able to do cold email outreach and include LinkedIn campaigns, duck soup campaigns. Um, and there are various tools which help you sort of like if you've got just email addresses that will, will, will allow you to, to maybe find um, LinkedIn URLs. So do a little bit of research. Um, if you Google those, those terms, then I'm sure you'll find those accordingly. Um, we do have some links which will be available via our support team. If you want to ping them a message, then we can always uh, point you in the right direction from there. Okay, thank you. Um, another one from, oh, let me read this one from, uh, from Eva first. Sometimes the message out, sorry, sometimes the messages I want to send out in the campaign don't send out, even though I've enrolled the target profiles. Is there a daily cap? I notice that the queued actions will get backed up and the messages then won't send until after the event has passed, which I wanted them to know about. Do you know why? I'm sorry. For yeah, it's probably, it's probably to do with your daily limits. Um, so depending upon your type of LinkedIn account you have, um, depending upon um, how you've got your throttling settings set, then that can cause a backup of things. And if you've you know, there are some people I've spoken to in the recent past who have got a lot of items backed up and DuckSoup will only carry out so many actions per day in order to keep your LinkedIn account safe. And that's going to be the topic of the webinar in two weeks time. But don't worry, I won't leave you hanging there. I'm going to leave you for two weeks. Um, if you go to your DuckSoup options um, and if you go to, um, again, make sure you've got uh, uh, expert user type enabled. If you go to the throttling settings here, this is where you can change your daily limits. And what we very often see is, for example, something like this, where people have got it set up maybe like this. So this means, I think this is actually the default setting. Um, this means that DuckSoup will send up to 25 connection requests a day and 100 direct messages. Now, direct messages are follow-up messages, so messages to your existing first-degree network. Now, if DuckSoup is going to be throttling things based upon profile visits, it could well be that it will not visit more than maybe 75 to 100 invites, uh, 75 to 100 profiles per day. So you're never going to hit your 125 here. And maybe you said, well, okay, well, that's all right. I wanted to send out 200 messages. Oh, press the wrong button. If I want to send it, I want to send this out now 200 uh, direct messages a day. That's all very well, but DuckSoup still needs to be able to visit that many profiles every day. So if you've got a paid LinkedIn account, consider changing this to 250, for example. That means that DuckSoup's going to open 250 a day, and that's going to be made up in this case of 200 direct messages and 25 connection requests, with a little bit over in case there's other actions going on. Now, if you've got Sales Navigator up it to 500, you should be absolutely fine. But we usually see that backlog happening because of that. The other thing to consider is make sure the planner is active. You're allowing DuckSoup to run. And if you've got Turbo, your computer is on and Chrome is open. If I minimize my browser, then DuckSoup won't run. So make sure all of those things are in place. Or if your screen saves it, saver kicks in, DuckSoup's not going to run. Your computer has to be on and active. Unless so you're on. Consider all of that. And um, while you're answering the next question or asking the next question, Joe, unless you are going to answer it, um, I'll share. Um, the safety blog um, uh, in the yep. chat link. Or have you already got it there? You might already have it. Oh, no, I've got it. I'll tell you what, I'll ask the question and then I'll post the safety one in there. Um, so last question then from Aaron, uh, which I, you've probably already covered, but I'll ask again, because it might've been missed. Uh, what should be in a CSV file for it to be used by DuckSoup for a drip campaign? So what kind of information needs to be in there? Um, if we go to our support pages, and please excuse the slowness of my hotspot. <laughs> I didn't want you to my hotspot. <laughs> wow. There we go. Um, if you go into our into our support pages and you just type in uh, CSV, um, you can see here um, how to correctly format the file on in Excel or the correct format of a revisit file. Essentially, you only need the LinkedIn URL. But have a check in here 
um, just type in CSV at this page, at the support pages here, and that will give you all of the detail there um, as to uh, the, the, the accurate way of making sure you've got the correct uh, column headers as well. Um, but yeah, the more information that's in there, the better. So if you've got the LinkedIn ID from a scan and bits and pieces, if you, if you want to dive down that rabbit hole, you're very welcome. Um, but uh, yeah, um, that's where I would go and uh, you'll be able to get the, You'll be able to get a sample file there as well if you're wanting to uh, to use that. But yeah, hopefully okay. that's useful. So I've added another couple of uh, links in there. Then so in the chat we've got the LinkedIn limits um, and the LinkedIn safety articles that we uh, well, that Giles was mentioning then. Um, and above those two, I've also shared the link to book directly onto the webinar for two weeks time, which I did mention already very briefly um, when Giles went off his cup of tea. Um, so maximizing LinkedIn, which plan is right for you? So as I said um, previously, this is all about the LinkedIn plans that we kind of have to use, free, premium, sales navigator and recruiter. We'll touch on all of them. Um, we'll talk about the features, we'll talk about the benefits of upgrading, we'll talk about how to get around some of the limits that are imposed and some of the restrictions in there. Um, and obviously we'll touch on DuckSoup as well, but the focus for that one really will be on LinkedIn plans and which one you should be using uh, to be achieving your goals. So that's in two weeks time. Um, note the times there. Um, I had a couple of messages earlier. I've forgotten names, I'm sorry, um, but the time is on your screen there. So 9 a.m. PDT, 12 p.m. EDT, 4 p.m. GMT and 5 p.m. CET. So we're going into the winter winter time zone uh, in the UK and in Europe anyway uh, and the states catch up in a couple of weeks I think two three weeks um, yeah so I think we've, we've put everything in there already um, in terms of support uh, the same as usual for those who have joined us before you'll get to speak to Giles um, or Scott if you uh, go for a paid session, whether that's a booster or a technical session. Um, so if you want any help with your integrations, things like that, then head for a technical. If it's just kind of how do I do a campaign and kind of bits and pieces like that, then go for a booster. If it's just a very quick minute, a quick 15 minute chat, then you can uh, approach our support desk and they will happily. Um, yeah. One thing to point out there that primarily our support is provided uh, virtually. So um, if you contact our support team via the email address that you've seen popping up on various slides or via our live chats uh, op option on the um, on the support mm -hmm. pages then we'll do our best to answer it answer your question and queries virtually that way uh, via the chat or email if we can't solve it that way then that's when we would uh, then set up a direct support call with either myself or scott or one of the team um and i think we'll leave it there for today we've obviously run over a little bit thanks to Thanks for the blip in the middle, but thank you for sticking with us. Um, don't forget to share your reviews. Good reminder there, Jas. Thanks very much. Um, so G2 is really good place, really good platform to to share your reviews, your experiences, so that you can help other users or other people who are looking at which LinkedIn tools to use. Um, and it's always good for our support teams as well, so they know what they're doing uh, is the right thing. Um, yeah, I will then say thank you, Giles. Thanks for thank you, uh, Joe, for your uh, for your interlude as well. <laughs> and thank you for coming back, team. <laughs> I think they were That's right. <laughs> my interlude. The computer nearly uh, went out the window. I wouldn't have been back then, would I? <laughs> um, hopefully, we'll see many of you back in two weeks' time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.